Hey, you're not on YouTube, are you? What did you say? Yeah, what did you say? Right. See, wait, are you watching the video? Alright, alright, you don't see the video right now. Alright, alright.
guys.
Good evening. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Good. My name is David Porfido, and I'm proud to be the Director of Athletics here at Cliffside Park High School. I want to thank everybody for tuning in for session one of our live 2020 Winter and Spring Varsity Awards show to honor our student athletes and coaching staff. Before we get started, I'm asking everyone to keep the families in your prayers of those affected by COVID-19. Cliffside Park Athletics lost one of our own, teacher, coach, friend, Mr. Ben Luter. In addition, board education member, Mr. Paul Keller, passed away earlier this year from natural causes. Please keep them and everybody affected by COVID-19 in your prayers. At this time, I'd like to recognize and thank our board education members for all their support, our mayor and town council, our superintendent of schools, Mr. Michael Romangino, our business administrator, Mr. Lou Alfano, our building principal, Mr. Larry Pinto, and our vice principals, Mr. Ken Schmidt and Mr. John Lombardo. Our athletic programs were able to run so efficiently because of the outstanding support staff we have in place. Those include our athletic coordinator, Mrs. Jenny Diaz, our athletic trainer, Mr. Phil Struzzi, Stefano and his entire maintenance crew, and our transportation department, run by Glenn, Perry, and all of our drivers who keep our kids safe on the roads. During the winter season, in the, in the league, Cliffside Park had nine first team, second, nine second team, and 10 honorable mention all league athletes. To continue on accolades, three junior wrestlers advanced to the state regions. One of them qualified for the state finals in Atlantic City. 
the dance team are in second place at states in only their, their first season ever here at Cliffside Park. And the boys basketball team advanced to the BIT finals. While there's so many amazing student athlete and team accolades that we are so proud of, I think it's these last three months that have been the biggest test for all of them. If you're an underclassman, use this pandemic as motivation. Your four years of high school go so quickly. And we know, know that tomorrow's never promise. So every game you play, you have to play it like it's your last. If you're a senior, the virus may have stolen your senior, your senior spring season, your senior events, senior activities. But one thing it can't steal is your future. Stay positive, work hard, and continue to look for opportunities. If, say a few words about their team and honor each student athlete. I ask that the student athletes take their microphones off when you're only when your team is there, as long as there's no background noise, and acknowledge recipient receipt of your award with a quick thank you holding up the plaques and certificates that was previously handed out to you. Starting off tonight is our girls basketball team. I'd like to welcome head coach Carly Cerrone and assistants, Kim Shaw and Brandy Luter. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I'd like to start by taking a moment of silence for Ben Luter. Thank you. Ben was at almost every one of our games, both home and away, always supporting the team and giving us some much needed comic relief. He was a great coach and teacher and a loving husband and son, and he'll be greatly missed. But I know that we'll all continue to honor him and his legacy through our passion for athletics and education. I wanna to begin tonight by thanking the Board of Ed, Mr. Porfido, the athletic department, coaches, parents, and the players. In addition, I'd like to extend a huge thank you to Coach Shaw and Coach Luter as they've been a great support to myself and to the team. I can't do this without them and I really thank them a lot. Uh, I'd also like to congratulate everybody on here tonight. I know we wish we'd be, we were at Villa Amalfi, but you know, this will do. Uh, we have eight athletes this year to recognize, two all league honorees and six seniors. So just bear with me as I get through. Um, our season got off to a little bit of a bumpy start, um, but I'm proud of where we ended up. Uh, there's no better way really to walk away from a season than a competitive last game against a really good DePaul, uh, which tells me it's not how you start, but how you finish that really matters. So thank you girls for sticking with it and never giving up. First, I'd like to announce Ashanti Satan. Ashanti, you could say thank you and hold your award up for a sec if you want. Thank you. I want to congratulate Ashanti for earning honorable mention all league. She's the type of player you want in your team. She always works hard, gives it her all, and she's totally dedicated to the game, which makes it really easy for us to coach her and which makes her such a great role model for her teammates. I don't think she missed one practice this year. She's a really good kid, and I'm very eager to see what she brings to the table as a senior next season. Ashanti Satan. Thank you. You're welcome. Second, I'd like to announce Maya Winters. Say thank you. Thanks. I want to congratulate Maya for earning second team all league. Coming off of a very successful freshman year, Maya did not disappoint as a sophomore. Her skill in handling the ball, her ability to create offensive opportunities, and her confidence and hustle all make her a dynamic threat on the court. Maya is truly fun to watch as a bunch of other coaches and refs make note of every game. And I'm very excited to see where her and Ashanti lead us next season. Maya Winters. Thanks, coach. You're welcome. Next, our seniors. I'd like to give them a huge round of applause. It's really quiet, sorry. <laughs> First up is Madison Aligo. Hi, Madison. Unfortunately, Madison couldn't play this season due to a knee injury, but she was with us at every game to support, do the book, and provide some welcomed comedy to her teammates and coaches. She has a great drive, a good sense of humor, and she's a hard worker. And we wish her all the best as she attends Sacred Heart in the fall. Madison Aligo. Thanks. You're welcome. Next up, Samaya Doce. Thank you. Samaya is our recipient of the Heart of a Red Raider Award for her tremendous efforts on and off the court. Samaya was an absolute pleasure to coach. She hustled, listened, worked hard, and wanted to get better. Despite being prone to some accidents and injuries, 
She had a great attitude and awesome work ethic, and we wish her all the best as she's thinking of attending Penn State this fall. So my Doce. Next up, Dorothy Anderson. Hi, Dot. Hi, thank you. <laughs> very tough and very aggressive. Dorothy was a strong defender, always under the rim battling for a rebound. Not afraid to fight for the ball or guard the biggest girl on the floor. She's both mentally and physically tough. And this type of resilience will serve her well moving forward. And we wish her all the best as she pursues a nursing degree at the college of her choice in the fall. Dorothy Anderson. Thank you. Good job, Dot. Good job, Dot. Next up, Brianna Lopez. Woo! Yay! Yay. Anna. <laughs> Thank you. Brianna Lopez, never a dull moment with three. Uh, practices, games, bus rides, always joking around, making everybody laugh, even the coaches sometimes. Uh, but when she really put her mind to it, she was a huge presence on the floor and we missed her thighs when she got hurt late in the season. Despite that, she managed to push forward with a laugh, and we wish her all the best as she's thinking of attending Montclair State in the fall. Brianna Lopez. Thanks. Next up, I don't know if she's here, Dina Najmadeen. Is she here? Well, I'll, I'll read her anyways. Dina. All about basketball, Dina gave 100% of her to the game. She may be small, but she always played big, and her competitiveness was contagious. Whether it was pushing her teammates to finish sprints or fighting after a loose ball, Dean was fully committed to being the best that she could be. We loved her energy and desire to win, and we wish her all the best as she attends FDU this fall. Dina Najmadeen. And last but not least, Emily Orbea. Yay. She was live at Acme. That's dedication, if I ever saw it. I'm live at Acme. <laughs> um, so, Emily, every practice, she greeted the coaches with a huge smile and a hello. Uh, she was pretty cheerful, except when running a 17. And we could always <laughs> count on her for a few clutch threes. And when she was on, she was on. We've all enjoyed watching Emily develop as a player and seeing her confidence grow tremendously over the years. And we wish her all the best as she attends Penn State in the fall. Emily Orbea. Thanks. A big thank you again to each of the seniors for their ongoing commitment to Cliffside Park Athletics and another congratulations to all the other athletes being honored tonight. I wish you each the best of luck in all that you do. Thank you and everybody be safe. Congrats, girls. Thank you, Coach. Good job, Thank you, girls. Thank you, Coach. Good job. Bro. Good job. We're going to move on to our sport of wrestling. Head coach, Charles O'Hanlon. Assistants, Craig Satera, Corey Montefort, Vincent Egloff, and Aldell Ventura. The opportunity to coach Cliffside Park, uh, Mr. Pinto, Mr. Lombardo, Mr. Schmidt, all the high school administration. Mr. Porfido for everything he does. A special shout out to Ms. Diaz in the AD's office, Mr. Struzzi. Uh, Sergeant Detective Miller, who is our uh, recreation director. The recreation wrestling is so uh, important for the high school. They are our feeder program, and uh, he's doing some great things there. Um, also, would like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Porfido, Mr. Uh, Coach Miller, and um, Coach Cabrera for coming back for our Matthew Joskowitz Memorial Duels this year. Something that met, uh, meant a lot to me in honor of uh, Matthew Joskowitz. And uh, I would be remiss if I did not mention Coach Luterer, great coach, you know, great guy, uh, someone who will definitely be missed. So I wanted to mention him. Uh, start off by just talking about my coaches really quick, my coaching staff. I have two, uh, three volunteer coaches, Coach Ventura, Coach Egloff, and uh, Coach Montefort. Um, these are guys who I have known since they were kids. I was fortunate enough to be on staff when they were in high school. And when I got the head coaching job, they just reached out, wanted to help. Um, are not teachers, work a regular job. You know, after their, their job, they come out and, you know, help the kids at Cliffside Park. So I really want to thank them. Uh, my assistant coach, Coach Chutera. Coach Chutera is my right hand. My right hand in the building, out of the building. You know, uh, couldn't imagine coaching without you. Just a phenomenal coach, phenomenal person. Just wanted to thank him. 
Uh, our team this year, we finished 11 and 11, um, step in the right direction for us. You know, we spent a couple seasons below 500. Um, what is, what's most important to me, what stands out the most to me is, uh, our perseverance this year. We were riddled by the injury bug. We did not have our full lineup for most of the season. Uh, we asked kids to step into situations where they didn't think they would have to. And the kids just really did a great job. 11 and 11 just missed qualifying for the States. So I just wanted to point that out. I will start off here with um, Armani Nunez. Armani, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Armani. Armani. Oh. Armani. Armani, as a freshman, Armani as came a freshman. out first team all league. Came out first team all league. Turned out his sophomore year gets hurt in football. Turned out his sophomore year gets hurt in football. Armani, shut your mic off, bud. Gets hurt, wrestles all of last year with the torn leg. Had the opportunity, didn't have to wrestle. Could have called it a season, decided to come out, help the team. Came out, came back out this year. Injury bug hit. We did not get Armani back until the middle of January. And for wrestling, that is a long time. We start right after Thanksgiving. Our first match is the third week in December. Armani did not get all league honors this year, quite frankly, because – he was hurt and he missed matches and he could have backed it in, but he kept coming here. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello, Sean. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Sean, um, again, coming off a really solid sophomore season. Injury bug hits. The injury bug's going to be a little bit of a theme for our team this year. Uh, injury bug hit, got him a couple weeks into the season. He starts, he's working out, everything's going great, gets injured again. We did not have Sean until the middle of January. Um, as a coach, this, you know, in the sport of wrestling, this is crazy, uh, not having kids until the middle of January. But Sean comes back out, puts together a really just a solid season, 17 wins on a limited schedule, was honorable mention all league, um, one match away from going to the regions. Junior, we'll be back next year. Sean Farrat, thank you. Next, and Andre Rivera. Thank you. Andre. Um, so Andre really just emerged as, as a leader this year. Hardest worker in the room. Just a, a phenomenal example on the mat, off the mat, student athlete. Uh, was named uh, as a captain this year. Um, Andre last year wrestled 220 in heavyweight for us. This year he ended up cutting down to 170 pounds. Um, uh, it got to a point in the season where our lineup started to, to fill out a little more and we needed someone to cut down. Andre just was like, coach, I'll do it. I'll do it for the team. Helped us win a lot of matches, went on to the district tournament, ended up making the district finals, qualifying for the regions, you know, great accomplishment. Junior coming back next year, captain on uh, honorable mention, all league on Andre Rivera. Next, Brandon D'Alvera. Brandon. Brandon, I know you're here. There you are. Brandon. The injury bug is going to strike again with Brandon. Unfortunately, Brandon tore his labrum during football this year. Brandon had a choice. Um, we're coming towards the, you know, it's it's end of November now. Go see, to see Doc, and Doc's like, you got two choices. You can wear the sling. Try to compete for as much as you can, or we can get surgery now. Brandon chose to compete, want to help the team. Um, really, for someone who wrestled a limited season with a torn labrum, had just a, a great season. Took uh, was second team all league, with honorable mention all county. Um, I think he finished the year eighteen and three. Just a really a, a great year, considering he wrestled the, the entire year injured. Um, Captain of our team will be back next year. Junior Brandon De Oliveira. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Last, we'll go to Jacob Leva. Jacob. Thank you, Coach. Jacob, no problem. Um, Jacob 
team captain. He's really been the backbone of our team all all year long. Um, you know, we are in such a such a tough league, one of the toughest leagues in Bergen County, and, and we wrestle a tough schedule. And we looked at our schedule this year. We kind of went to Jacob, and we're like, you have an opportunity to wrestle a just tough schedule. You're going to what we call in wrestling be battle-tested. And um, it's really up to you if you want to go through that. He just looked at us as a coaching staff, said whatever you guys want. Um, Jacob wrestled every tough opponent possible this year, and it, it, it paid off. He was a Bergen County place winner. He was a district place winner again. He placed in the region tournament, uh, which uh, qualified him for the state tournament. So he's a state qualifier. There have not been many junior underclassmen state qualifiers um, in Cliffside Park. So he's uh, definitely in um, good company on that. He was first team all league. And he was honorable mention all county. Our team captain, junior, returning next year, Jacob Leyva. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just want to thank everyone. Um, congratulations once again to all the athletes tonight. And thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you, Coach. With no seniors being honored, we're expecting big things from you guys next year. Great job. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, next up, we're going to move on to our new dance team, all right, our competition dance team. Please welcome head coach Courtney Lynch and the assistant Ashley Fredo. Hi, guys. Can everyone hear us? Yeah, hi. Hi. <laughs> hi, girls. Okay, so good evening, everyone. We hope everyone is doing well and staying safe and enjoying the time that we usually never have with our family and loved ones. Before we begin, we'd like to first thank Mr. Romagino and the Board of Education members, along with Mr. Pinto and, of course, our leader, Mr. Portito. Without these amazing people, we would have never experienced nor had the opportunity to start this team and bring something new to Cliffside Park High School. So all of the parents and athletes who came out to every single one of our competitions this season and created that sea of red that we wanted, we thank you for the love, support, and most importantly, entrusting your children with us. As some of you may know, I graduated from Cliffside Park High School in 2009. And in my senior memory book, one of my bucket list goals was to one day have the honor to coach at Cliffside Park High School and to be amongst teachers and coaches I idolize and create memories and lessons that shape me for my entire career. Thank you to my coaches for inspiring me more than you'll ever know. This year, we had the great opportunity to start the Cliffside Park dance team, and to say it was one for the books is a complete understatement. Although we didn't really officially begin our season into September, and we continued to add dancers through October and November, we finalized our roster with 17 varsity athletes. These dancers worked hard in every single practice in every single practice and efforts to go head to head with some really big teams in the medium hip hop varsity division. Our season started in January and continued to March where we had two second place wins, two first place wins, which included dance team union regional champs and placed second at states where we placed higher than the 2019 state champs. We are incredibly proud of these dancers for their endless hard work on and off the floor, but for their love for each other and their team. As we have been coaches for over a decade now, we have never witnessed such a strong bond and pride of their hometown and for each other in such a short amount of time. Although we will miss our three captains and seniors, we are proud of the legacy they are leaving behind. The first senior we would like to honor is Ms. Brenda Evangelista. Hi, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Brenda never attended a practice where she wasn't happy. Her energy was always positive and a smile could light up the room from miles away. She never placed limits on herself, even when she struggled at times in tumbling or when we would encourage her to dig deep to feel that hip hop expression and less beauty and grace from her technical ballet background. <laughs> she always got up, tried harder. She led her team with poise and grace, and her positive enthusiasm will leave an everlasting impact to carry through next season. Brenda, we're so proud of you and your accomplishments, and we know we, you will go far in this chapter and your natural positivity and determined attitude. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Next senior was our final athlete to our roster, Victoria Ramos. Hi. Thank Hi. you. <laughs> You're welcome. 
Victoria, although started the season a bit more shy, within weeks she started smashing goals and proving to herself her inner strength. She displayed constant strength throughout the season. It was never fearful to, vol to volunteer herself to fly through the air in stunts. As the season went on, her confidence began to shine, and her energetic attitude was what started the team's game day mentality. Within five minutes, if we were entering the gym of a competition, Victoria was leading the team with the utmost confidence and energy. We'll miss her determination, but we know she'll leave a mark for another athlete to lead by her example. Victoria, we're so proud of your accomplishment, and know you'll continue to bring that game day attitude in every aspect of your life. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. And our final senior we would like to acknowledge is Anya Runlet. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So we have had the joys of coaching Anya since she was actually nine, but it wasn't until this season on CBDT where we actually heard her voice. Anya has always been respectful, bright, and extremely quiet. This team was the best decision for her, in our opinion, since CPDT gave Anya her voice. She discovered that she can outwork any obstacle that stood in her way and get back up with a smile and do it over again. Her leadership skills are outstanding. Her passion for her team is inspiring, and her loyalty to her art team and coaches is something that rarely exists. And as her coaches, we are so proud we got to witness it. We know whatever her plans are, she will be determined to be the best version of herself that she can be, not only for herself, but for everyone and anyone who has the pleasure of working beside her. Anya, we are so proud of you. and know you will accomplish whatever you set your heart and mind to. Thank you. Lastly, we wish we had more time with you girls to bask in everything a year that one team has to offer. We're so lucky to have these memories with the three senior captains. It wouldn't be the same without them. We know they'll continue to crush goals, push themselves beyond their capabilities, and leave their mark on whatever they touch. As you stand in your homes, remember this moment. Remember the lesson that life has taught us these past few months. Life has its own plan and we all can't control. So don't become complacent in your life or in your sport. Strive for more, prepare for more, because you never know what's going to happen and when you have to just pivot and adjust. We're so proud of the three of you, and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Great Thank job. You. Great job, coaches, and good luck to the three seniors here. Uh, we had the opportunity to have them perform at halftime at a few of the basketball games, and I think the entire student body in the crowd was just in awe uh, of how hard they work and, and what they put into it. And it just go it goes to show and it showed second place in the state so next year we go first place that's all great job Thank you. Right. moving on we're going to go to our boys basketball team head coach steve jano assistant mike scarzafaza and scott morin good evening everybody can everybody hear me okay good uh, i'd like to uh thank mr romagino the board of ed uh, for their support uh mr pinto mr lombardo Mr. Schmidt for coming to a lot of our games and supporting as well. And of course, uh, our trainer, Phil Struzzi, that's been at every one of our games and is there no matter what. Uh, and especially Mr. Porfido and Jenny. Uh, anytime I need them, they're there day or night, uh, early in the morning, whenever. They're always there whenever I need them. So I can't thank everybody enough for all the support because uh, without them, it's not possible. I'm um, going to go into basketball. Uh, this year, the boys' basketball team had a lot of experience coming back, so we expected to be very competitive and to be in more games than the previous year. We had only won three games uh, the year before and three games the year before that as well. So uh, we were pretty uh, down the last two years, but uh, we had a lot of goals that we were trying to accomplish in the preseason, and we met most of them. Uh, our first goal was to win our Christmas tournament, which unfortunately we lost at the buzzer. So that was one of our few goals we didn't accomplish, but we were uh, about a second away from accomplishing that. Uh, we wanted to win at least two games in the league this year, which we had not won a league game in over two years. We wound up winning five league games this year. Uh, we wanted to win at least 10 games during the season, which we wound up winning 13, uh, which was actually uh, more than we had won the previous three years combined. Um, and we wanted to make the States for the first time in three years, which we did as well. And to add to that, uh, we made it to, all the way to the BIT tournament final, which we had a chance to win in our last possession. Um, we also had four players on our team make all league selection, which is the most we've had in over four years. Um, if you want to ask me, do we have a successful season? The numbers and what we set out for our goals to be for the year shows that, yes, we did. 
Um, but to me, that really doesn't paint the picture for our success. I felt that our season was successful because of the off-season commitment that our guys put in during the summer and fall workouts. It was the dedication to coming on time to every practice as well as not missing practice. It was our leadership of our captains and seniors that too helped with our success. I felt that as uh, a team, we really bonded and that uh, my relationship with each and every one of these young men grew so strong and that is what I am most proud of. Um, now to talk about our senior basketball players along with uh, our all league players. Um, I'm, even if they're, they're here or not here, I'm going to be talking about each and every one of our seniors. Uh, our first senior is Jonathan Saliz. Uh, Jonathan's journey in our program is not an ordinary one, but one that should be looked upon with pride and something that I will use as an example for future basketball players trying to be a part of the Cliffside Park basketball team. John did not make our freshman team, but did, it, that did not stop him from coming back the next year and trying out for our JV team. John made the JV team his sophomore year and got a few minutes here and there off the bench. As a junior, he started some games and got good minutes off the bench as well for the JV and helped provide the team with his inside presence. As a senior, I told John before the season that his minutes would be very limited and that I would need his dedication just as much as anyone else on the team. I told him that we would love for him to be a part of the program and to think about this if that's what he wanted to do. I believe the next day John came up to me and told me he was all in no matter what and that he wanted to be a part of the team and help out in any way that he could. John was at every practice on time and worked his butt off against our first team every day. His hard work and dedication to our program is the reason why we had a successful year and I couldn't be prouder of him. Every team needs program players like John and I know for a fact that if John puts the hard work and effort he did into this program that he will be a very successful man out in the real world. Congrats, John. Our next senior, uh, Sined Ziade. Uh, Sined's journey in our program was a similar one to John Saliza's. Now talk, talk about being a lucky coach. Not only did I get one hardworking program player in John Saliz, but I got another one in Sined Ziade. Sined made the freshman team and got limited minutes off the bench his freshman year. Now I don't know if I'm correct or not with this, but Sined I don't think played his sophomore year. He came back his junior year and got good minutes off the bench as well and some games starting for our JV team. Coming into the summer for his senior year, I kid you not, Sined made every off-season practice as well as the fall practices. That's unheard of for any player. Usually a player misses a handful of off-season practices because it happens in the summer, but not Sined. His dedication to the program blew me away. This dedication led all the way into the season, which continued with him making every practice as well as usually being the first one in the gym. All of his hard work paid off because he got to start many summer league games as well as our scrimmages before our regular season. Unfortunately, he did not start during the year, but the reason I bring this up is to show how mature of a person Sined was. I never had more of an adult conversation with a 17, 18-year-old player before about telling them that they would come off the bench rather than start like he had been doing all preseason. All I remember hearing from Sined is him asking me what can I do to be better and if it's going to help the team out, and that's all I want to do. So that is the epitome of what it means to be a team player, and I am honored in giving him the heart of a Red Raider Award for the season because he truly shows what it takes to have the heart of not just a Red Raider, but of an amazing and genuine human being. Uh, congrats, Sinead. Sinead, I believe you're here, so if, you're, uh, if your video is on, you could show your award. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sinead. Uh, our next senior, uh, Brian Carvajal. I'm not sure Brian's here. Um, he might be out of state right now, but I'm going to talk about him quickly. Brian was our rim protector and best rebounder this year. Brian really broke out of his shell during the BIT tournament where he played like an all-league player. Brian averaged for the season around four points a game and seven rebounds. During the BIT tournament, he averaged 10 points a game and 12 rebounds. His best game of the year was in the BIT semifinal against Demarest, where he scored 10 points and had 20 rebounds. Mm -hmm. He played like an animal that game. He was a wall on defense that game, not letting anyone get to the rim. Brian had the potential to be a dominant inside force when he wanted to be. He was the pass-first player for most of his career, which wasn't a bad thing since he saw the floor well. I wish he would have realized what he could have done scoring on the inside like he had done during the BIT tournament. Brian is a very skilled big man that had smooth inside moves. Brian was recognized this year as an all-league honorable mention for his play. 
What I will miss most about Brian is the way he could joke with me during the year, which helped me lighten the mood for me throughout the year. Uh, congrats, Brian. Uh, next player, uh, senior, Justin Chevalier. Uh, if Justin, I know Justin's here. If he could turn his video on. Um, what can I'm I... at work right now, so I don't have any myself. No, oh, that's okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, what can I say about the guy who's been the face of our program for the last three years? He's been a captain, the point guard that ran our offense, and the catalyst for our energy on defense he was, since he was a sophomore. He has some of the best dribbling skills and driving ability we have seen in this program in a very long time. He also knew when to put the defensive clamps on an offensive player as well as when to poke the ball free for a steal and an easy layup. He averaged uh, 10 points a game for us this year as well as eight assists and two steals a game. His best games were against Mets Charter where he had 19 points, Richfield Park where he had 17 points, and Richfield where he had 14 points. Justin was a quiet captain and let most of his talking happen on the floor with his play on the court. Justin will be sorely missed and will leave a hole in our team that will need to be replaced big time. Mostly everybody knew him as Red, but I knew him as our point guard that ran the show. Justin was awarded this year with a big honor of being named first team all league, which is some accomplishment in our league, which is one of the tops in the county. He is also, he is also the first all league player in Cliffside basketball in over four years. Uh, we're gonna miss him big time uh, in school, out of school, just a, a really good kid. Uh, and I've been uh, with him the last four years. And like I said, I hope he comes to a lot of games and shows up to a lot of stuff. And I just want to congratulate Justin for a great career that he had in basketball for us. So congrats, Justin. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Jesus Pena. Uh, Jesus' video is up. Jesus can show his award as well. Thank you, Coach. Jesus, to me, was our wild card of a player this year. He was an athletic, high-jumping lefty with a smooth stroke. I knew the potential and ability that he had on the basketball court. I just wasn't sure if he was going to put it all together and figure it out. The beginning of the season started off a little slow for him. He started to pick it up and took off scoring for our team, which was the game against Dumont. After that game, Jesus led us in scoring 12 of the next 21 games. If, it wasn't leading, if he wasn't leading us in scoring, he was either second or third that game in total points. Jesus' best game scoring was 23 points against Dumont, 20 points against Fort Lee, 20 points against Richfield Park, and 18 points against Northern Highlands in the BIT final. Jesus and Arzik were our one-two punches in the BIT tournament, which helped lead us to the final. Jesus averaged 13.5 points this year, leading our team in scoring with his six rebounds per game. Jesus received second-team All-League honors this year, which is a great ac accomplishment. Easily, he could have been an all first-team All-Leaguer, but that's how great our league was this year. He was an All-Leaguer in my eyes, but his second-team All-League is well-deserved. We would not have had the year we would have had if it wasn't for Jesus stepping up in the role he had this year. His fiery competitive competitiveness fueled himself and our team all year. I will miss that the most, along with his love for the game and his upbeat attitude towards me and his teammates. Congrats, Jesus. Thank you, Coach. Last but not least, Arzik Ali. Arzik, I know he's here. If he's got his video on, I can't see everybody. Um, he is was our captain as well for the last two years. Uh, Arzik really stepped into the role of being our vocal leader this year, which I am most proud of. Thank you, Thank you. Justin did most of the leading on the court while Arzik did the leading at practice in the locker rooms and during downtimes with the team. My most memorable moment of the season with Arzik was when we won our first league game in more than two years against Westwood. I got a little emotional in the locker room in my post-game speech, and when I was trying to regroup myself, I felt someone hug me, and when I looked up, it was Arzik. After that moment, I felt that our coach-to-player relationship was closer than ever, which really helped push our team towards many productive practices, which led to wins. Besides Arzik stepping up into that role, Arzik's gameplay along with Jesus helped us propel us to the BIT final and many other wins. Arzik was second on the team with 13 points uh, scoring a game, which goes to show you the one-two punch that him and Jesus were. Arzik led us in scoring eight games, and like Jesus, was either second or third in, in the scoring box if he didn't lead us in scoring. 
Arzik averaged almost three threes per game and broke the single season school record for threes made in a season, which is something to uh, to be accomplished because the other two guys that were one and two on that list, I played with both of them, and they were hella uh, they were really good shooters. So that's an accomplishment in itself. He also finishes second all time for career made threes with 201 made threes, only three behind the all time leader with 204. With those great accolades, Arzik also received second team all league, which was well deserved for our sharpshooter. He, like Jesus, could have easily been an all league selection, and to me, was that for our team. I'm going to miss our strong bond we had this year, and his leadership helped most on and off the court. Congratulations, Arzik. It was a memorable season for the Cliffside Park Boys basketball team this year. We made many great memories and experienced a lot together that each and every one of us will cherish, always cherish. I wish all of our seniors good luck in their future plans, and I hope to see them all at some of our games next year and the years to come. Before I end, I want to thank Coach Moore and Coach Scars for the endless hours they put in throughout the year in helping our basketball program out. I couldn't do it without them, and they're a great support staff for me and especially our student athletes that love them as coaches. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you, Coach Coach Jano. Appreciate it. Good luck to you, seniors. Um, Jesus Pena, I'd just like to say something. He is uh, Cliffside Park's 2020 NJSIAA Scholar Athlete this year. Uh, he's going to receive something from the state. It was mailed out Monday, actually. I just got a note today. So congratulations, Jesus. I know we honored you two weeks ago, letting you know, but excellent job. And to all you seniors, good luck. It was a great Thank season. Um, we're going to finish the first session with our baseball team. Um, Coach Jano is going to take on that uh, that task. And I'd like to also welcome the assistants, Coach Brunelli, Coach Matt Brunelli, and Coach Scarzapaza. All right. Uh, I guess I won't go through the normal uh, thanking everybody in the beginning like I did. Once again, thank everybody, Ms. Romagino, Board of Ed, Mr. Porfido, and the rest of the support staff that helps us out whenever I need anything. Um, I will be talking about our uh, baseball team in honor of Coach Luterer. Coach Luterer was more than a colleague and fellow coach, but a brother to me. I miss him every day, and our baseball players do too. He affected my life in so many ways that I could never thank him enough. Our baseball program when Coach Luterer took over was at the bottom of the barrel in Bergen County. The past five years that he has been the coach, we have improved in wins every year. He really took this program to the next level. And we can't thank him enough. This upcoming season was going to be by far our most anticipated year. Unfortunately, our baseball season was canceled along with the rest of the spring sports. Even more of a re uh, reason why this was disappointing was because we had built a team over the past two years of young talent, which was primed and ready to make a run. We were a team that was looking at least at a 13, 14, 15 win season, along with making the states and some noise in the playoffs. We had everything, good starting pitching, a solid fielding team, and a lineup from top to bottom that had power, speed, and contact hitting. Also, along with the talent we had on our team, uh, we really had a bunch of good kids in and out of the classroom. We had kids that loved baseball and were hungry for success. I feel for these guys and wish our seniors the best of luck in their future endeavors. Uh, now on to the players. Our first player I'm going to talk about is Wagner Vasquez. Uh, this was Wagner's first year on the team. Uh, he was a senior. He was looking to become a pitcher for our JV team and help the varsity out of the bullpen. He had a very strong arm for a smaller framed player. The time we spent at practice, Wagner had an upbeat and loving aura about himself. I wish we could have seen him in action on the mound. Uh, Wagner, just want to wish you good luck in the next chapter of your life and congrats on graduation. Our next senior was Justin Serrano. This, this was Justin's second go-round on the team, playing on the JV as a sophomore and then taking a year off as a junior. Justin was an outfielder for the JV team who had speed, to, uh, which helped steal many bases. He was also a pinch-slash-courtesy runner for our varsity team due to the good speed that he showed on a base pass. Even in a short amount of time, Justin was a part of the baseball program. We had f many fun memories with him. Good luck and congrats on graduating as well, Justin. Luis Prado, next senior. This was Luis's second year a part of the program. He was a multi-sport athlete that played for the football team as well. 
Lewis came out last year for the first time as a junior. He played center field for the JV team. Lewis had a lot of speed, which suited him well for playing center field. He was so quick that occasionally he would overrun and beat the baseball to the spot. His speed also helped on the base path where Lewis could easily steal a base for us. Lewis also had a great attitude and smile on his face while practicing and playing for us. It was a pleasure being able to coach Lewis for the past two years, and I wish him much luck in the future. Congrats, Lewis. Uh, Thank you, Coach. You're welcome, Lewis. I thought you were there. Uh, yeah, next, sorry, Coach. I'm, I'm at the field right now. Sorry. No, it's, uh, it's okay. I can't see everybody. That's the problem with this. Uh, Julio Rodriguez is our next senior. I'm not sure if Julio is here. I didn't see him before. Uh, Julio played for me on the JV as a freshman and was our best pitcher. He played some outfield and first base as well for me. The next, the next two years for Julio were, were spent in Fort Lee, unfortunately. He then came back for his senior year, which was a big plus for our pitching staff, and we were really looking forward to seeing what he could do for us. Julio would have been one of our top three pitchers in the rotation this year. He had the potential of being a first or second team all-league pitcher. Julio is committed to playing at the next level at St. Elizabeth's College, and I wish him all the best. Congrats, Julio. Our next senior was Jesus Pena, another multi-sport athlete. Um, Jesus, unfortunately, did not play baseball his freshman year. He did not. He, uh, I had to beg and plead with him to come out, and he eventually did his sophomore year and was mainly a pitcher for the varsity along with some uh, playing some right field and occasionally hitting. By his junior year, he became strictly a pitcher only. He was our one-two punch with Andy Ramos as our top pitchers last year. He, along with Andy and Julio, would have been our top pitchers in the rotation. Jesus had poten the potential of being an all-league pitcher as well and then some. Even though Jesus was only a pitcher for the baseball team, his presence on the bench and for the other pitchers in our rotation really helped with building team morale. He was always looking to help out with the book or any drill when we needed him. He, was def he, he has definitely helped me out during the tough time with the loss of my best buddy and uh, Coach Luter. If it was to talk, play a video game, or to help track down guys for me on baseball or basketball, Jesus has been there. And this is why it's my honor to give Jesus the Heart of a Red Raider Award for the baseball program. Jesus will be sorely missed not only in our sports programs, but in our school environment. If I am lucky enough before I retire from coaching and teaching, I hope I come across more people like Jesus Pena. Jesus decided not to... Uh, not to play at the next level, but to enter the nursing program at Ramapo College, which is even more impressive to me. Jesus was one of 120 kids accepted into the program where over 1,200 people applied to get in, which is, which is amazing. Congrats, Jesus. Very proud of you. Thank you, Coach. Uh, next up, Ruben Pichardo. Ruben came to our program last year. Uh, and we couldn't have been happier to have him. He played left field for us and has one of the strongest arms I have ever seen. He also batted fourth for us in the lineup and had power to all fields. We, along with every team in our league, knew not to throw him a fastball. He also has speed for us, which uh, helped him steal many bases. Ruben earned second team all league last year and would have easily been an all league player for us this year and even some county recognition as well. Even though I rarely understood what Ruben was saying, or he rarely understood what I was saying, we had a lot of fun these past two years joking around. Ruben always had a smile on his face and just loved being on a baseball field. Ruben will be playing baseball at the next level, but he hasn't committed to any school yet, even though schools are interested in Ruben. Ruben, wherever you go, good luck with baseball and the next step in your journey. Thank you, coach. You're welcome, Ruben. <clears throat> Last but not least, Isaiah. Isaiah, I have had the pleasure of coaching Isaiah since he was a freshman. Uh, he played on the varsity as a freshman and for the most part has been our shortstop and a relief pitcher for us over the years. Isaiah also has been a two, three, or five hitter for our program over the years as well, which shows that he can hit along with field. His bread and butter is his smooth fielding ability at short and his quick release and strong arm. Isaiah was one of our captains this year. Even though he was more of a quiet leader, he led by example. 
And it also helped that he was bilingual since he could lead everybody on the team in either language, which helped out with the coaches. Isaiah was a second team all league player last year and would have easily been an all league player this year as well as maybe getting some county recognition. Isaiah will be taking his talents to the next level where he will be playing at St. Elizabeth's College. Isaiah has been a great kid since I met him as a freshman, and I am sure St. Elizabeth is going to love having him as well. I wish you all the best on your next step in your life, and congrats, Isaiah. Thank you, Coach. You're welcome. Uh, just like basketball, I want to wish all the seniors the best in the next steps of their journeys, and I hope to see them at future games. Congrats to all the seniors and all league players and everybody that attended tonight. Uh, congrats to all the seniors and all league players. And I especially, I forgot to uh, thank the uh, dance team as well for dancing at our basketball games. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to uh, watch any of them because I'm down in the locker room talking to the kids. But everyone ranted and raved how great halftime was. So hopefully you guys keep doing that for us. And on that Thank note, you. you're welcome. And on that note, I just wanted to wish everybody a uh, uh, safe and uh, good summer. Great. Thanks, Coach Jano. Appreciate it. Good luck to the seniors on here. And thanks to the underclassmen boys for supporting the, uh, their seniors and everything. I see Andy on here and a few others. Thank you. Um, this concludes... Uh, session one of our awards night tonight. I want to thank everybody for being a part of this and honoring our student athletes. And, uh, you know, just wish the seniors the best of luck. And, uh, you know, thank you for being a Red Raider. You know, so important. You know, never forget where you come from. At 7.30 sharp, we're going to start with session two, which is going to include bowling, boys tennis, comp cheer, and our winter and spring track teams. Uh, at the conclusion of that, the winter and spring, there will be a uh, track video dedicated to the, to the team, the seniors, and everything, and you're, you're welcome to stay on for that after we conclude with session two. Um, I am going to loop the video right now for the half hour break that will show the distribution of the awards that all the coaches, uh, we all pitched in, we you know, delivered it to the kids, to the kids' homes, you know, they got what they deserved. You know, we tried to make this, this spring the best we could. So thank you everybody. See you at seven 30.
Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? My name is David Porfido, and I'm proud to be the Director of Athletics here at Cliffside Park. Thanks for tuning in for session two of our live 2020 Winter and Spring Varsity Awards show to honor our student athletes and coaching staff. Before we get started, I'm asking everyone to keep the families in your prayers of those affected by COVID-19. Cliffside Park Athletics lost one of our own our teacher, our coach, and our friend, Mr. Ben Luderer. In addition, board education member, Mr. Paul Kelleher, passed away earlier this year from natural causes. Please keep everybody in your prayers. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to recognize and thank our board of education members, our mayor and town council, our superintendent of schools, Mr. Michael Romangino, our business administrator, Mr. Mr. Lou Alfano, our building principal, Mr. Larry Pinto, and our assistant principals, Mr. Ken Schmidt and Mr. John Lombardo. Our athletic pro programs at Cliffside Park run so efficiently because of the outstanding support staff that we have in place, who include our athletic coordinator, Mrs. Jenny Diaz, our athletic trainer, Mr. Phil Struzzi, Stefano and his entire maintenance crew, and our transportation department run by Glenn Perry and all of our drivers who keep our kids safe at a weight contest. For accolades, in the winter season, Cliffside Park had nine first team, nine second team, and 10 honorable mention student athletes. A sophomore bowler qualified for the state finals. And our comp cheering team, how about them? League champs, great job. 
Uh, there are so many things, you know, amazing accomplishments that our student athletes and our teams have done over this year. But I think these last three months have been most challenging and the biggest test of all uh, for the underclassmen that are on here. Um, use this pandemic as motivation. Your four years of high school go so quickly, and now we know that tomorrow's never promise. So play every game like it's your last. For the seniors on here, you know, you may think this virus has stolen your spring season, your senior year, other events, prom, and it did. But you know what? It's not going to steal your future. All right. The future is yours. Stay positive, work hard, and continue to look for opportunities. We are all Cliffside Park strong, and we're all Red Raiders for life. Tonight, each coach is going to say a few words about their team, and then each honor athlete's name will be called. When I do it, when, when it is called, please turn off your microphone and be recognized. Hold up the awards that was already distributed to you. Thank you. Session two is going to kick off with our bowling team. Please welcome Coach Tiffany Woodley. Hello. Um, I'd just like to thank, again, Mr. Romagino, the Board of Ed, Mr. Schmidt, Mr. Lombardo, Mr. Pinto, the teachers who took time out of their evenings to come out and support the team, even though we're away at every game. Uh, and of course, Mr. Porfido and Jenny Diaz for making everything work smoothly all the time. Um, I'm so glad that you guys were able to make this awards presentation happen under these circumstances. Um, and I hope that everyone here tonight, that you and yours are well, and my heart goes out to all of those that we've lost. Um, when it comes to bowling, I feel like I say this every year, but bowling is split into boys and girls, varsity and JV, but we all play at the same time. And so we are unique in that we all get to stay together for all four years, regardless of the level of skill. And that creates some amazing connections between the teams and between the players. This year, that was amplified tenfold because we had, I think it was nine seniors who came out at, during their senior year to play with the team who joined JV, as well as a number that got promoted to varsity based on their skill. And so we had this awesome mix of very new players and seasoned veterans that had been playing for a couple of years or even all four years of high school. Um, and that created a great chemistry within the team. Um, so in terms of, I'm gonna talk about both teams and then I'm kind of gonna talk about the mix of honors that they received. The boys team earned more points this season than in the last four years of competition. And that's a testament to every player I saw the varsity team blossom between Avi and Finn, Tony and Danny and Christian all worked each day to improve and to inspire each other to do better. And that really did pay off. The girls didn't beat their win record, but they did earn 25 points this season. And that's a team high for the last four years as well. Um, the girls definitely brought spirit and fun and entertainment and smiles and laughter uh, to every game. Across the board, what always impresses me about our kids and what makes our school so unique is that they win and lose with grace and they win and lose with the support of even the opposing athletes. Our kids are the first to cheer for a strike and the last to zone out when there's one game left to finish. I can't count the number of parents and coaches who say how lucky we are to have students like ours. I'm so proud to say that every bowler being honored tonight also is a fantastic athlete as well as a scholar, every single one of you. Um, so you, you were honored in that way as well. New to the team this year were two seniors who brought spirit and enthusiasm to the season. Thais Moscat, are you here? Maybe. We're gonna go with she isn't here. So I'm not gonna talk directly to her because that would be weird. Um, she balanced her work and her team obligations. And I believe she may have been pulled to an obligation tonight and was 100% in the game when she was with us. Um, she made it a priority to try to work her schedule at work around her practices and games. And, you know, we're going to miss her. Even though she was with us only for a year, she improved rapidly and she'll be moving on to Villanova University next year. 
Congratulations to her. <coughs> Margarita Carrillo was another senior who joined the team this, this year. And she was the kind of kid that you looked for when she wasn't able to attend a game because she was always finding ways to lighten the mood when it was stressful. And she kind of created, a, became a role model for the other players of what to do when the game wasn't going your way. She would make jokes, she would laugh, she would do goofy things just for the sake of alleviating the tension because bowling can be very tense. Um, next up, Christian Cruz has, oh, Margarita, were you there? I'm sorry, I don't think she is. Christian Cruz, is he here? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Hi, uh, Christian Hi. has been with us for two years. And what I noticed about Christian is, is he's very reserved and very quiet. He's the kind of kid that you have to pay attention to, to realize how much something matters to him. This year, he leaned into the team by advancing as a player and showed showed that by stepping up to varsity in key situations throughout the season, anytime we needed him to step up, um, and also fighting to make the bus to be able to make it to games uh, due to other obligations. It has been an honor to work with you for the past two years, and we're going to miss you, even though Stevens Institute of Technology will be glad to have you. Thank you. You as well. <laughs> This year, I was really excited that uh, Mr. Porfido introduced the Heart of the Red Raider Award, um, and that is the award that I'm gonna talk about the next two, two students. Um, Emily Morrell and Daniel Moran began their bowling journey together and have been with the team for the last two years. I can truly say that their presence has defined the spirit of the boys and girls teams, respectively. Emily, you're here, right? Yes, I see you. You're here. Yeah, I'm now, here. Thank you. Emily, you are a joy every day. You are the first to lend a hand, the first to help someone understand what's going wrong with their shot, the first to support every competitor you meet. Um, we are going to miss you next year. I'm going to miss seeing you in the hall and waving and stopping in and saying hi. So congratulations. You are the heart of the Red Raider. Thank you, Miss Woodley. I'm going to miss seeing you, too. You really have been, like, a really good role model for me, too, Yay. over the past two years, and thank you. Of course. Daniel is the one player uh, that we had who is consistently harder than, on himself than I could be. Throughout the season, he was always taking notes. He's always – they had notebooks this year. He was always taking notes, recording his scores, recording what he was doing, and working to improve. And I know that that is something that he does all the time. Uh, he is also the bowling team's baker. And so we are going to be brokenhearted when he heads off to culinary school next year. But he is also, while he focuses on his own advancement, he is the guy that is always there to inspire other people. You know, he's always smiling. He's always focused. He's always cheering everybody else. And we were glad to have you for the last two years, Daniel. Thank you. Oh no, you have the clicking. Um, next up, a sophomore player, um, Avinash Rampersad. Did he get back in? Yes, he did, great. Um, Avi is an amazing student and an amazing athlete. Um, don't tell the people in the other in the other meeting, but he has two passions. He likes basketball and bowling, and we are very lucky that he has chosen to pursue bowling during his high school career. Um, he's truly brought a new approach to the games for some of the new players. I inspired them to look to get better, to join leagues in the off season and his focus, his work ethic, and his determination are all infectious. His work paid off this season when he qualified for the individual tournament of champions and represented our school at the next level of the state competition. He also scored the high game at this year's county tournament with the fifth highest series of the day. 
all of this qualified him for the honor of first team all league and second team all county as a sophomore. And we are luckily lucky to see that he will be stepping up as captain next year and two years left to uh, take states. That's Avi. Next up, Juliette Morel, the girls captain, earned honorable mention this year, which was her second year on the team. I remember when she first started and I realized that she was the first student I had ever seen that picked up the nuances of movement and the physical aspects of the game within minutes. She was so good, so fast that she started helping the other new people when she had only been playing for days. And not only that, but she also brought, you know, positivity and, and focus to the team. And so she helped everybody else get better, even when she was learning herself. And that's a testament to what a wonderful person she is and what an exceptional leader she's been. She'll be heading off to Bergen Community next year, and we are going to miss you, Juliet. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> Last but certainly not least is Anthony Major. Tony has been with the team all of his high school career and is the one bowler I know who can throw a ball around his body and still make it go where he wants it to, no matter how many times he shoots, which is amazing. If you, if you know about bowling, that's a weird thing to be able to do. Um, over the past four years, I've seen a lot of commitment from Tony. I've seen him make bowling a priority. And I've also gotten to see him grow up. And I'm very impressed with the man he's become. As this year's captain, his strengths as a leader emerged as he worked to be both an inspiration to his peers and a role model. Tony is a testament to the idea that with dedication and clear goals, you will improve. This year, he broke the 200 barrier with a high game of 235, earning him honorable mention from the league for his performance this season. Anthony, I'm very proud, proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. I also want to say a uh, good job to all my teammates. We had a great year this year. I'm very excited to see where we're going to be uh, in the upcoming future. Right. Thank you. <laughs> and that's all. Thank you, Coach Woodley. Uh, good luck to all the seniors on here. But um, you know, going further, I think uh, Anthony said it right there. Avi's going to lead the lead the team and continue their winning ways. And Avi, there is a uh, NJSIA waiver that you can get since bowling is a non-contact sport. You can play two in one season. All right, so come talk to me about that, and we'll get that done. Uh, moving on, we're going to go to our boys' tennis team. Head coach Jonathan Capizzi and assistant Tiana Salvatera. We hear you, Jonathan. Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to all parents, students, and staff that were able to join us tonight. Uh, I first want to start off by thanking Mr. Romangino, uh, the members of the Board of Education, uh, and Mr. Porfido for giving me the opportunity to work with our student athletes. Um, I really consider it to be a privilege to uh, have worked my way through the system and been able to take over as a head coaching position. Uh, it's, it's a great experience to share with all of our students. And I also just wanted to take a moment uh, to further continue what Coach Jana had said earlier. He had some very kind words about our colleague, Van Luterer, who uh, is a great man and a great person. And I thank him for the advice he has given me uh, my first year as a head coach, as well as Matthew Benelli and uh, former head coach, uh, Jonathan Genucci. So I thank all of them for the help and advice uh, to make this season what it was. Um, we are, unfortunately, our spring season got cut short and was canceled because of everything that was going on here. But our students and our student athletes, they stayed persistent. Uh, I could not be more proud of the group of boys that I had and also the other students and other managers from the girls team that participated in what we did. Uh, I told them over and over again that if you don't let something like this stop you from the things that you want to do in life, that nothing is really gonna stop you in the future going forward. Um, if you can stay committed in times of adversity and if you can focus on things that you personally wanna do and achieve for yourself, 
Um, you are going to be setting yourself up for great success in the future. And I just commend all the student athletes who, who stuck things out when uh, they could have definitely uh, turned, turned away and decided to uh, focus their energy in other places. Um, I want to thank my assistant coach, Tiana Salvatoria. Uh, we had a great first season working together, um, and I'm really looking forward to working with her in the future, and I just appreciate everything that she did for us this season. Uh, we have five seniors here tonight. Uh, one of them, unfortunately, had a prior commitment and could not make it, but the other gentlemen are here, and I thank you for that. Uh, the first one in terms of who couldn't make it, his name is Alessandro Perez. It was his first year on the team. Um, he was very excited to be part of the team and looking forward to the season ahead. Uh, I know Alessandro from when I taught him in middle school, and he's a great guy. Uh, I told them that hopefully we're going to be able to get together sometime over the summer when things get lifted a little bit and maybe be able to meet and have our senior day. Um, but for Alessandro, congratulations on a great year, and thank you for everything. Uh, next up, and he also was a bowler that Miss Woodley just talked about, uh, Anthony Major. Um, I've known Anthony for a number of years between sports and other academic endeavors that he's been involved with, and uh, he's just a great overall guy. He's very committed to the things that he does and will always finish what he started. So I wish him the best of luck going forward with everything, Anthony. Thank you. You're welcome. Next we have Laner Cosme. We like to call him Big Lane. He was a second year member of the team and he was um, he was a smile along with everything that was going on. He would always kind of lighten the mood and crack jokes for what we were doing. Uh, but when it came time to play and to practice, he was always dedicated with what he had going on. And uh, he really was a, a good asset to the team and I appreciate him participating. So thank you so much, Laner. He was here a moment ago. Um, okay, next up, this gentleman, not only is he a good person that I've known ever since I started my career here in Cliffside Park, but just last week, I just received some very proud news that Benjamin Moran, not only is he a good person, athlete, and student, but he's also going to be representing the class of 2020 as their valedictorian, and I just want to commend him on that and all the hard work. That takes four years of hard work and you should be congratulated for that. Good luck with everything you do in the future. Proud of you, Ben. And lastly but not least, we have our captain and also the recipient of our Red Raider Award, Pablo Herrera. Uh, Pablo is a great guy. He was the first one to reach out to me when he found out that I got promoted to head coach to congratulate me and ask how he can get involved to uh, make the team move forward in a positive direction and build upon what we had coming in from last season. Uh, he is a stand-up guy who is extremely committed with whatever it is, uh, and I know that he's going to be tremendously successful, uh, and I'm proud to have coached you and that you've been part of the team, and just thank you for everything, Pablo, and good luck. Thank you so much. I am very appreciative of that you guys gave me, uh, awarded me the Red Raider Award. And uh, I believe if we would have had a season, we would have won so many games. Thank you so much. I'm right there with you, Pablo. I agree also. Um, so that, those are our seniors that we're going to recognize. And I just want to congratulate all the other student athletes in the class of 2020. You're an exceptional group of people. And I know that you're going to do great things in the upcoming years. So congratulations to you all. Great job, Coach, and uh, it was a pleasure logging into your practices over this past spring. Great job, and good luck to you all seniors and everything. Uh, moving on to our league champion comp cheer team, head coach Stephanie Schmidt and assistant Catherine Asto. Good evening, good evening, everyone. First, we'd like to congratulate all the athletes. A big thank you to Mr. Porfido and Jenny for all their hard work throughout the season and for their constant support. Also, Phil, the Board of Education, Mr. Romangino, and our administrators, Mr. Pinto, as well as Ms. Lombardo and Mr. Schmidt, who always come and support, our, support us at our competitions. We had an amazing, successful season and won the league. Our seniors this year were Jess, Valentina, Jen, Isabella, Kenny, and Talia. These six athletes have been huge assets to our program throughout the years. We have seen so much hard work, compassion, dedication, and modesty, and we are so proud to have coached these wonderful athletes. 
Watching them grow over the past four years, not only as cheerleaders, but as young adults, has truly been an honor. These seniors have always led by example. They showed that in order to be successful, it wasn't about the individual athlete, but the team as a whole. First, I'd like to acknowledge junior Rachel Pereira, who received honorable mention. We're looking forward to having her lead next year's team. I'm not sure if she's with us right now. No, I don't see her. Okay, moving on. I would like to speak first about Jessica. Jess hasn't had an easy time on this team all the time. She started off as a flyer her freshman year and then moved to a base and then ended up finishing as a front. Most cheerleaders would be discouraged by this, but not Jess. She was willing to be placed wherever she was needed because she always put the team in front of herself. She is always willing to help others and she'll be greatly missed. Next is Valentina. Valentina has the drive to be the best and the perfect flyer. Coming in her freshman year, she had no previous cheer experience, but you would never know looking at her now. She understood she had a lot to learn and worked constantly in order to be considered a flyer on our varsity team. When she got the spot on varsity, she worked even harder to be the best. Anytime a stunt wasn't working, she quickly put her group back together and tried it again, again, and again until she hit it. She is beautiful and fierce in the air as well as on the ground. It is also portrayed in her jumps and motions. Next is Genesis. Jen is a beautiful flyer, but also an amazing tumbler. Every week at tumbling, she pushed herself harder and harder in order to get more difficult skills. Genesis had a difficult time with her stunt group this year. Switching bases is not an easy task for a flyer, but she knew she had to do it in order for the team to be better. She understood the importance of helping the team to be more successful and competitive. Next up is Isabella. She was always willing to help others with basing, teaching the underclassmen, but at the same time, always push it, pushing herself to be better. She has amazing jumps and tumbling. She is the strongest base we have on, her team, on our team, and her strength and leadership will greatly be missed. Next up is Kenny. Our, oh, he was our only returning back. Um, he has more patience than any other 18-year-old I have ever coached. As our only back, he constantly was helping the other new backs who have never cheered before and spent so much time teaching them the basics and helping them to be as great as he is. He has the drive and determination to always be better than he was the day before. Lastly is Talia. She's also the recipient of our Heart of a Red Raider Award. She is one of the best all-around cheerleaders I have ever coached. From her jumps to tumbling to being thrown high into the air, she always did everything so graceful. She's extremely hard on herself and always pushes herself to be better, not only in cheer, but also in life. Her energy and drive will surely be missed. We thank you all so much for all you do for your teammates and for us. You are true role models, and Coach Asso and I are so thankful to have such an amazing season. We love all of you. I believe they're all together at the beach right now, <laughs> so they're all waving. <laughs> thank you, guys. You're the best. Hi. <laughs> We're literally all at the beach together right now, but Sally, thank you so much for everything you've done. Thank you, thank you girls. Thank you so much. Hopefully we can see each other soon. We're going to miss it. Yeah, we will. We'll always miss it. Thank you, Ms. Corfito. You're welcome. Great job, team. What a way to go out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For our final two sports of the evening, uh, we're going to combine our winter track and field and our spring track and field. So please welcome head coach Ruby Rago, assistants is Jamie Woist, Katherine Johnson, Tom Mandiel, Sean McIsaac, and Gabriella DePena. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Romangino and the Board of Education for all of their support over uh, the course of this year. I'd also like to thank Mr. Pinto, Mr. Schmidt, and Mr. Lombardo for everything that you guys have done. Um, Mr. Porfido and Jenny for holding down the fort in the athletic department. Um, you know, you guys get everything that done that we need, and uh, that's greatly appreciated. I'd also like to give uh, Phil a very uh, nice thank you for helping our athletes get through any injuries that they have over the course of the season. Next, I'd like to uh, thank the coaching staff. Um, while I thank you just so you could see who I'm talking about, again, if you can just say hello, I'd appreciate it. Um, first is uh, Coach Weiss, if you're there. Hi guys. Uh, Coach Weiss um, is is 
a major backbone of our program. She coaches our distance team in the winter and the spring um, and gets our, our team to perform at the highest level. As you are going to hear a lot, we talk a lot about our distance runners. And I think, you know, people that follow the sport know that our cross country and distance team a lot uh, carry through our track team. So that's a credit to uh, Coach Weiss. Next is Mr. Mandiel. If you'd like to say hello, Mr. Mandiel. You don't want to, you don't have to. Well, Mr. Mandiel um, is our throws coach in the um, in the spring. Um, and he also helps a lot of, in the winter also, which I really appreciate. He works with our throwers um, who put a lot of time in the weight room and um, outside of the weight room on the field. And so he deserves a lot of credit. Uh, next is Coach Johnston. Coach Johnston, if you'd like to say hello. Hi, everybody. Congrats to all of you. Uh, Coach Johnston works with us in the winter, and she runs our middle school track program in the spring. Um, she is uh, our sprinting coach and um, does a really, really good job with those sprinters, has developed them into some very, very good athletes. Um, oh, Mr. Mandiel, there you are, if you'd like to say hello. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Coach Wago. No problem. I was trying to unmute my microphone, but thank you. I'm sorry. Thanks. Um, Mr. McIsaac, if you're around. He was here a second ago. I just saw his face. And hey, Mr. McIsaac. Hi, sorry about that. There he is. Congratulations to everybody. Uh, Mr. McIsaac is our uh, jumps coach and springs co uh, sprints coach in the spring. Um, you know, for the first week that we worked this spring, he, he really got them going right from the start, uh, which was extremely exciting. Um, that's Mr. McIsaac. And last of the coaching staff is Coach DePena. Oh, yeah, you're still on mute, Coach DePena. But there you go. Still, so, that's okay. But that's fine. Uh, don't worry. We see you. Um, Coach DePena um, is our spring. She's a former CPHS alumni and she um, is our, our hurdles coach uh, in the spring. As a, before I go forward about the team, I'd like to mention how much the Cliffside Park Athletic Department and school community is going to miss Ben Luter. My thoughts and prayers go out to his family. Uh, we're all thinking about uh, him and his family during these times. Uh, it's very surreal to be doing an athletic award ceremony this way. I feel bad for the student athletes, but knowing that they've persevered, adjusted to the circumstances and succeeded while doing all this will only make them stronger in the long run. Uh, we have a great group of athletes here representing the Cliffside Park Track and Field Program at Cliff, uh, here in Cliffside, a group of people that I'm happy to have gotten to know over the course of the years. In fact, this group of seniors will go down as possibly one of my favorites all time. I think back to some of the teams that I've coached um, the 2011 and 2013 cross country teams that had won a lot of championships. Um, they were a great group, but this group I think is, is a step above them. Just the, they're, they're athletic, but they're more than that. They're just great people. They're smart, funny, and I'm happy I got to know every single one of them. Our winter track team had some great individual success this year. We had many athletes place in the league championship. Uh, they, some of them joined our record board. We had tons of personal bests and many runners running faster than they had from pre the previous spring, which is an awesome accomplishment so, er so early on. Unfortunately, the spring season started, but then ended abruptly with this pandemic that we're still facing. We started the season and had a great first week. Our numbers were strong and our talent looked very promising. It was a season I was really looking forward to. Once school was canceled and everything went online, coaching with coaching and learning, these athletes really showed so much character. We sent home workouts to the team using the Remind app. Uh, we had weekly Google Meets to check in with them and put them through live workouts. Although this wasn't ideal, it showed us a lot about the type of kids that we coach. It showed us how truly dedicated and disciplined that they, that they are. They did the workouts. They signed into the Google Meets. They pushed themselves every day to become better, not knowing if they would be able to compete. That says a lot about a person. It 
it's, it's it, it shows that they they will be there for any adverse uh, adversity that is thrown at them. That being said, I'd like to introduce you to the winter and track winter and spring track and field teams. When I talk about each athlete, I ask that the athlete says hello or thank you to know who I'm speaking about because tonight is all about you. First, the underclassmen, Ariana Martinez, a junior. If you're on Ariana, say hello. Hi, thank you. Let me to show my face. Uh, yeah, so everybody sees you. Um, if you don't, if you don't feel comfortable, you don't have to. Oh, there you go. There you are. Ariana is our team's best jumper. She placed in our league championship during indoor track in the jumping events, earning her all league honors. She's so helpful at practice with the young jumpers, teaching them drills and helping them out. I really look forward to having Ariana back next year. Thank you. Um, Estella Aguilar, another junior. If you're on Estella, you can pop on. Hi, and thank you, Coach. You're welcome, Estella. Um, she's one of our hardest workers on the team. Estella came out for spring track the first time last year and started out as a sprinter. Uh, towards the end of the season, she came and told us that she wanted to move up to middle distance and try the 800. It was the best move she ever made. She officially was transferred to a distance runner, and she ended up, uh, she ended up quitting soccer to run cross country. Uh, because she was such a good distance runner. She's now on our varsity distance team and was awarded second team all league in the winter. That's Estella Aguilar. Uh, Samantha Arcilla, another junior. Samantha. Hi. Hello, Thank Samantha. you. How are you? Uh, Samantha is <laughs> also awarded second team all league. She's part of our girls distance team. She began running her freshman year, and right away she knew that she we knew that she was somebody that we could really rely on. She was always positive and upbeat. You know you can count on her. She's so easy to coach and always ready to please. I'm happy to have another year with Samantha. Samantha Arcel. Thank you. Uh, sophomore, sophomore Tasneem Issa. Tasneem. Hi. Hello, Tasneem. There you are. Uh, Tasneem is only a sophomore, which is very exciting to have a, have a sophomore that has received an all league honor and is here with us tonight. Um, she is the perfect mix of hard work and ability. In fact, the harder she works and the faster she runs, the better she looks while doing it. She's such a sweet person, and she's, but at the same time, so driven as an athlete. She pushes to the end with everything she has and her time shows it. If she continues in the same direction, she is going to be one of the best runners uh, that Cliffside Park has seen. Uh, she was given all league honors, and that's Tasneem Issa. Thank you, coach. You're welcome. Uh, junior Kelsey Pereira. Kelsey. Uh, there you are. All right, Kelsey. Uh, I'm so excited to have Kelsey back for another year. Not only is she the best runner on our team, but she's also one of the best runners in our league and arguably one of the best runners in our county. Um, she is one of Cliffside's best to, uh, distance runners ever within the track and field program. She has already the cross-country record at Darlington, po uh, possibly our indoor school record in the mile and two mile, and unfortunately, we didn't have a spring season, but she was within seconds away from our all-time school record this spring. I'm excited that she has one more year to accomplish that and officially become the best female distance runner in Cliffside Park history. It's Kelsey Pereira. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Lucas Landano. He's uh, also a junior. Lucas? Okay, Lucas's mic doesn't work, so he's here. Uh, Lucas has like unbelievable natural speed and ability. Uh, this year, he dominated the league in the winter in all of the sprints events and competed with the best of the best in Bergen County. Like Kelsey, his he is closing in on some outdoor records, so not being able to compete this spring was very frustrating. Lucas did, however, 
this spring, never stop working. In fact, he would send me pictures of the hill, we, hill repeats that we would run in practice that sometimes he'd push himself so hard he'd want to throw up. Uh, he'd show me that he was out there still doing them on his own, which shows something about him and his work ethic and his character. He is also a star football player at Cliffside, so he knows that missing out on a spring season would set him back. So he did everything he could plus more this season to get him ready for his senior year. I look forward to having him for the next two seasons. Lucas Lindano. Uh, Lisa Lott Torres. I got to know Lisa Lott over the winter. Uh, oh, Lisa, Lisa Lott, say hello. Sorry. Hi. Hello, you there? There you are. All right. Um, I got to know her over the winter. She had never done cross country or track at all, but um, every single week since probably December, she came into the, the coaching office and said, when does track start? When does track start? And uh, she came out for her first week of track. And unfortunately for her, the season, she didn't get to have a season. And I'm, I'm very disappointed for her for that, but she did do all the workouts. She signed into our Google Meet. She did everything she had to do. Um, um, I'm, again, I'm sorry that she didn't get to have the season she looked forward to so much, but she became stronger for it. Um, she's a senior and she is going to FDU next year to study global affairs. That's Lisa Lott Torres. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, next is Emilio Figueroa. I'm not sure if Emilio's on right now. I'll just say a few words. If, if he's on, say hello. If not, I'll just say a few words about him anyway. Emilio came out for cross country as an underclassman, and um, distance running wasn't his thing, and it's not everybody's thing. I understand that. But this spring, he came out to be a thrower, and he was really enjoying it for the, for the first few uh, practices that we were able to have. And I'm sorry that he didn't get to actually have the season he was looking forward to. I wish Emilio luck in all he does in the future. Um, next is Alexander Bravo. I'm not sure if Alexander is on, um, but he did track a few times over the, over the years. He kind of bounced between events. Uh, but this winter, he became a thrower, and that's where he, he did the best. He, he, was, he became a very good thrower and developed over the course of the season, and I'm, got, I'm glad that he got the opportunity to do something and enjoy it. Uh, we wish Alexander luck next year and in the future. Julio Estrada. Julio, I saw you on here. You hear Julio? I go. You hear Julio? Yeah. Hello, Julio. Um, Julio ran cross country and track uh, for a few years, and then the beginning of this year took a little bit of a break. This spring, he signed back up, and I was very happy that he was going to finish out his senior year strong. Julio is a middle distance runner that developed over – his years and, and got better and better um, each time he raced. Next year, he will be attending Bergen Community, uh, and good luck with everything you do in the future, Julio. Thank you. Matthews Camaragos. I saw you on here too, Matthews. Hey, Coach. Hi, Matthews. Uh, Matthews came out for winter and spring track for the first time his senior year, and he's somebody that I really wish would have come out earlier on because he became one of our best sprinters um, right, from, right from this winter season. Um, he was a pleasure to coach. Not only was he a, a good runner, but he was just a great kid to get to know, and I wish him the best of luck going forward. That's Matthews. There you are. Hi, Matthews. <laughs> um, next is Mitchell Hernandez. Mitchell. Yeah, how's it going? Hi, Mitchell. Uh, last spring was Mitchell's first track and field season. He came out because he's a lineman on Coach Mandiel's football team, and he wanted to throw for him in the spring. Uh, he turned out to be a very, very good thrower. He's such a strong athlete. In fact, Coach Mandiel has told me that he's one of the strongest kids that he has ever coached. More importantly than his strength is what a nice person Mitchell is. Mitchell's always the, the kid that will say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Do you need any help with that? Thank you. Um, so as a person, I am so happy that I got to know Mitchell over the past year. Um, next year, he's going to be working construction in his father's business. So if anybody needs any work done, contact Mitchell uh, Hernandez. He can help you out. 
Uh, good luck with that, Mitchell. Thank you. Uh, Carlos Moreno. <laughs> Mr. Lombardo needs a new deck. <laughs> Carlos, Hi, I saw that. Where are you? Are you here? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Hi. Hello, Carlos. Um, like Mitchell, Carlos also came out for spring track uh, last last year. Um, he's also a football player for Coach Mandiel. His hard work on and off the field made him an excellent thrower. In fact, he was one of our team's best javelin throwers um, last year. He's a great kid to get to know. He's nice. He's respectful. He was brought up very, very well. And he's somebody that always has a smile on his face. If you guys end up staying on for to watch the um, little presentation uh, for the, the track athletes that we put together, um, every picture that Carlos is in, he's got that really nice smile. And that, that shows really who Carlos is. Next year, he is playing football at Wagner College, and uh, that's an awesome accomplishment. So good luck with that, Carlos. Thank you, Coach. Uh, Rudy Rivas. Not sure if Rudy signed on, but a little bit about Rudy Rivas. He came out for winter and spring track every single year since his freshman year, and unfortunately, he never completed a season. He would come out, he was one of the best runners on our team, and then he would not he would, he would quit. And this year, this winter, he came out, and he came out dedicated and ready to go. He was actually our number one boy uh, distance runner this winter and stuck out the entire season. We were so excited to have him coming this spring because he was going to run some incredible times. Um, next year, Rudy is planning on going to FDU. Uh, so we wish Rudy all the luck. Uh, Genesis Trellis Molina. I'm not sure if she's still on from that cheer group. Um, if she is, hopefully she hears. And if not, um, I'm going to speak about her anyway. So Genesis is a girl. Hi. Oh, you're still here, Genesis? Yeah. Oh, yeah. good. Excellent. Uh, Genesis is a girl with a lot of ability. She began running track last year and became one of our best sprinters. Uh, for some reason, she didn't run this winter, but she, when she signed back up for spring track, I was extremely excited. I wish I could have seen her complete uh, this spring because she has a ton of potential. Next year, she's attending Felician University and studying nursing. What a great accomplishment, Genesis. Thank you. You're welcome. Kimberly Martos. Kimberly. Are you there? I think I saw her earlier. Um, all right, Kimberly is one of the best hurdlers on our team. Actually, she is the best hurdler. And as a sophomore, she went to our league championship and won the intermediate hurdles for the entire league, which is an unbelievable, oh, her mic isn't turning on, uh, which is an unbelievable accomplishment for her and for our team to go and as a sophomore win, win that race. Uh, we were, uh, upset that she wasn't able to have this spring set track season because what she, her abilities were just unbelievable and uh, she was going to be able to accomplish so much. Um, next year, Kimberly is going to William Patterson and she is going to study education. She wants to be an elementary school teacher. That's Kimberly Martos. Yuriza Orolena. I'm sorry if I butchered your last name, Yuriza. Um, Yuriza, are you, are you on? All right, um, Yuriza has done track since her freshman year and developed nicely over the years. She does hurdles and middle distance and pretty much anything we ask her to do. Each day uh, she goes out there, she goes out there to become better, to do the best she can do uh, the day that, uh, best she could the day before. She is uh, a really hard worker, a really good student. In fact, next year, Yuriza is studying biology at Penn State. We are very proud of Yuriza. Andrew Polanco. Andrew. I saw him earlier, too. If you're here, you could say hello, Andrew. All right, Andrew. Um, Andrew might not be the most talented runner ever, but he's got something more important than that. He is one of the hardest workers I have ever coached. Um, he 
time after time has worked his way up to being on our varsity team and on our varsity relays. He's one of those kids that you enjoy coaching because every coach says you want the kid that will run through the wall for you. And that's Andrew. You tell him to do something and he's going to give you 120% when he does it. That's what makes him a good runner. That's what puts him on varsity. And that's something that you wish every single kid could have. Uh, Andrew was given the multi-sport award this year for playing football, running winter track, and spring track. If you keep up that drive that you have, Andrew, you'll be successful with everything you do in the future. So good luck. That's Andrew Polanco. Randall Ruiz. Randall. Hey, coach. Hi, Randall. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, Randall is so helpful to have on the team. He's one of our throwers. He throws in the winter and the spring. And um, Randall's like having another coach around. He's always reliable. He's always doing the right thing. And uh, in track, there's a lot of events going on at the same time. And Randall is excellent at making sure the throwers are doing the right thing at the right time. He helps coach and critique them. He helps make sure they're doing the drills correctly. Um, he makes coaching easy because he's so dependable. Uh, good luck to Randall next year. He's actually going to my alma mater, NJIT, and he's going to be studying engineering. Uh, it's Randall Ruiz. Thanks, Coach. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Randall. Um, Aria Kono. Aria. Hi, Coach. Hi, Aria. <laughs> Um, Aria is another one of those really hard workers. She came to practice every single day and pushed herself to get better. She would be upset if she raced and did not run as fast as she did the time before. And as a coach, you love to see that because that shows how much the athlete cares. Aria is very quiet and a girl of a few words, but if you get to know her, she's one of the sweetest people you will ever meet. Next year, Aria is, is attending Ramapo College and will be in the nursing program. Congra congratulations, Aria. Thank you. Jasmine Leva. <laughs> Hello. Oh, Jasmine, you were able to get off work tonight. That's great. Yeah, I actually <laughs> just got off like half an hour ago. So. Oh, awesome. <laughs> great. Um, Jasmine, or as many of you on the team know, um, we call Jasmine mom. And we call her mom um, for the reason of she's extremely responsible. She's a three sport athlete, um, varsity for all. She works 40 plus hours and excels in the classroom. She balances everything so well. As an adult, I don't even know if I can balance and accomplish everything that she does. More importantly than that, Jasmine is a great person. She's nice and sweet and funny. Ask any teacher that has ever had her and they will have only good things to say. I know Jasmine will be successful in the future because she's successful right now. She's going to Montclair State next year to study psychology, Jasmine Leva. Thank you. <laughs> Bouquet Kayabas. Hi. Okay. Hello, Bouquet. Uh, Bouquet has become such a nice surprise as a runner. When she first started, she was decent, but she fell in love with the sport and fully dedicated herself to it and became a great runner. On a very successful distance team, she was our number three runner. She ended up running times that I never thought she was capable of. You knew Bouquet was ready to race because she would have this look of determination on her face. Once you saw that look, you know she was just going to pick girls off one by one by one. Um, Bouquet was awarded the multi-sport award, award for cross country, winter and spring track, and also the heart of the Red Raider award for the, her, uh, for the, uh, for the spring for her hard work and determination. Bouquet is going to study nursing at Ramapo college next year. That's Bouquet Kayabas. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, Nelda Martinez. Nelda. Um, I don't know, maybe her mic isn't, isn't working. Uh, Nelda came out for track for the first time her freshman year, along with many other freshmen. We had a large freshman class, and she stood out immediately as a good athlete. Uh, but we didn't know her name yet at that point. So we nicknamed her Blue because she had blue shoes and she wore a blue shirt. 
Um, she made a, a large impact on us right from the start. She became one of those athletes you can rely on to do anything. Sometimes we had Nelda do distance events. Other times she would do middle distance. Other times she had to hurdle. No matter what she did, she gave it her all. Her times uh, improved tremendously over the course of the years, and she developed into a great, a great runner. Nelda was also very reliable and organized. She took on the role of leader and captain of the team. With her around, you knew everyone would be doing the right thing. She's a great example every day for the other athletes on the team. She was given the multi-sport award for cross country, winter and spring track. Good luck next year at Montclair State University majoring in elementary education. It's Nelda Martinez. You're welcome, Nelda. Uh, two more to go. There was 25. I'm sorry. I feel like I'm talking a long time, but there's a lot of, lot of seniors and a lot of kids to be honored here. Christian or Isabel? Christian, are you here? Hello. Hello, Hello Christian. How are you? I'm good. All right. Uh, Christian started off playing soccer. He came out for track in the winter and spring his freshman year. When he first started, he was okay, but he was somebody that never missed a day. Every day that was, he was there, he worked as hard as he could. And for Christian, that paid off. He became a very good runner. For the past bunch of seasons, Christian has been Cliffside Park's number one runner in cross country and track. He was also the best in the league over the past few years. He earned the Multi-Sport Athlete Award for cross country and spring track. He was also awarded the Heart of the Red Raider Award for this winter season. There was no other boy on the team that I felt deserved this award more. He encompassed everything you want in an athlete. He was a leader, a hard worker, and set a great example both in and out of the classroom for his peers. Christian will be attending Stevens Institute of Technology next year and studying mechanical engineering. Good luck, Christian. Uh, Thank you, Coach. You're welcome, Christian. And uh, last athlete to talk about is... Uh, Veronica Calderon. There she is. Hi, Coach. Hi, Veronica. Uh, students will always hold, uh, Veronica will, will always be one of those students that will hold a special place in my heart. From the first day she came to summer practice as an incoming freshman, Coach Weiss and I both knew she was going to be a special runner. We found over the years it wasn't just her natural ability as a runner that made her special, it was also the person that she is. As a runner, Veronica would go down as one of the best runners in Cliffside. She's run some incredible times. This winter season was one of her best, and we are sad that she couldn't have a spring senior season because she had been running so well and she would have had a breakout season. It's nice when you get to coach a runner with talent, but it's even nicer when you get to coach an unbelievable person. Veronica is someone you should get to know. She's someone I would want my daughter, if I had one, to be. She's smart, trustworthy, athletic, and has a great personality with a smile on her face all the time. I'm grateful to have Coach Veronica for four years and three seasons. Veronica was the Bergen County Women's Coaches Association Scholar Athlete Award recipient. She was also awarded the Heart of the Red Raider for the winter season, not only for a great season, but for being exactly what we, you would want a Red Raider to be. She's the full package. I'm very proud that Veronica received an athletic scholarship to run at St. Thomas Aquinas College next year and study forensic science. Veronica Calderon. Thank you so much, Coach. You're welcome. Um, before I finish up, I just want to congratulate all of the All League recipients and all of the seniors. Good luck next year. Um, I, I, Mr. Porfido is going to close and say a thing or two, um, but if you are on the track team, I would like to ask you to stay online. Uh, Coach Weiss has put together a video compilation. Anybody else is welcome to stay and watch it also. Um, but we've been with some of these kids three seasons, four years. That's a lot of time. And uh, they missed out on their senior season. And so we wanted to try to pull together um, a little 10-minute pres presentation uh, to recognize those kids that we've spent so much, so much time with. So Mr. Porfido will close and then track athletes and anybody else that wants to stay on and watch Coach Voice's video, it's excellent. Um, please do so. Thank you very much. Have a nice night, everybody.
Thank you, Coach. Great job. Uh, there's one thing I know, logging on to your virtual practices. I think you guys run the toughest one in the state. Uh, I was you know, <laughs> with the transitions going in and, and the switchovers, everything. Great job to the entire staff. Awesome. Um, one kid I would like to mention is senior Carlos Moreno. Carlos, you still on? Carlos is up for the I Am Sport Award, which is going to be uh, North Jersey Sports Awards on June 18th. Uh, obviously, they're going virtual as well. That's the Bergen record. Carlos is up for that award. He is a finalist. Um, I will put the link in the chat room right now so you guys can there. In addition, I will uh, be tweeting it out and sending everything out. But that's something to do. In addition to Carlos on there, we do have three soccer players, two up for player of the year and one uh being recognized as an athlete of the week. So uh, we definitely recognized uh, between Bergen and Passaic counties very well this year. Uh, and this does conclude our entire you know, year of sports. You know, thank you. You know, thank you. Seniors, good luck to you guys. Uh, we wish you the best. Uh, thanks for being a Red Raider. And, you know, just never forget Cliffside Park. We're an amazing community. And when we need to, we always get together and we're strong. All right. Enjoy the track video. Be safe, everybody. All right, guys, I'm going to present my screen and show it to you. It's the past four years uh, of your careers. I tried to get everybody that was on winter and spring track and cross country on here, so I hope you enjoy. Is an hour again? Good, good. All right. 